But we overcomplicate things so much when it comes to plant care and I hand on heart promise that by doing things this way your plants are going to be so much healthier and your life is just going to be so much simpler. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about house plant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you the lowdown on a biological pest control and a more natural approach to plant care. This is a video that I've been so, so excited to make for such a long time, and it's something that I genuinely feel like every plant parent should know about. So yes, I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. So, as I'm sure all of us are aware by now, whenever you bring plants into your home, there is a high chance that at some point or another you are going to encounter pests. I've recently been battling with thrips, spider mites and fungus gnats, so I have just released thousands and thousands of predatory insects into my home. It's not as scary as it sounds, I promise. We will get to that in a minute. I just want to quickly say I'm aware that I've spoken about the effectiveness of chemical and systemic pest treatments on my channel before, and I'm not saying that those things don't work, they absolutely do, but what I've come to realise is just how damaging these can be for your plants long term, and although they might seem like a really great quick fix, you're actually setting your plants up to be a lot more vulnerable to pests and lots of other health issues over time. This is something that I've only really properly taken taken the time to research and educate myself on relatively recently and at the time of making those videos I genuinely did believe that that was the best possible way of doing things but since I've started researching and experimenting chemical pest treatments are now something that I would definitely not recommend for your plants if you genuinely want your plants to be healthy. To put it very simply nature takes care of nature and we as humans often massively overcomplicate things. We'll bring a plant into our homes and as soon as things start to go a little bit wrong we'll start treating it with all these nasty man-made chemicals as a quick fix and in doing that actually massively disrupt the cycle and the balance of the plant which actually sets it up for much more serious issues long term. The last thing I'll say on this but perhaps the most important is that the reason plants are able to survive and thrive in the wild is because the balance within the soil or substrate isn't being artificially altered. There's nobody running around with a little bottle of hydrogen peroxide and Provanto messing with the natural equilibrium. So yeah, we just have to be incredibly mindful of everything that we're putting into our soil. Because when we start using chemicals, yes, we might be killing off the pests, but we're also killing off beneficial microbes and living organisms within the soil that help to keep the plant healthy. And you know what? Healthy plants are much less likely to be susceptible to pests. And this is where biological pest control comes in. I asked you lot to ask me some questions on it because I know there's not always a lot of sources out there. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to answer your questions. And then I'm going to take you around and I'm going to show you how I am using biological pest control, biological, biological pest control in my own home in order to keep my plants happy. So the first question is the one that I think everybody wants to know. It's definitely the question that I got asked the most. It is, isn't it gross? having loads of insects in your house don't you find them everywhere I've no idea where to start but I kind of want to try them so I think this is what probably put me off trying predatory mites or just biological pest control for a very long time because I kind of thought I've already got pests I don't really want to introduce loads of other insects into my into my house um, and obviously it does depend on what kind of biological pest control you go for. I know some people opt for things like ladybirds and wing lace butterflies, which are obviously a lot bigger and you would definitely notice them more. But the ones that I'm using, which I'll take you through in a minute, I literally would not know they were there at all. Like they stay very close to the plants. They don't stray. You'd never like find them on like your table or in your kitchen or anything like that. They literally just are there when they're needed. And apart from that, in my experience, they tend to stay fairly dormant. Even if I'm right up close looking at my plants and kind of like trying to look for them, a lot of the time I can't see them at all. They're actually, a lot of them are smaller than pests themselves. So I definitely wouldn't let that be a thing. Even if it sounds horrible, like releasing insects into your house, I definitely wouldn't let that be a thing that puts you off. And the next question is, can you use several types of predatory mites at the same time? So yes, you absolutely can. I am currently using, I've written the names on my screen because I'm not very good with the names, but I'm currently using Amblesius cucumaris, cucumaris for thrips, which come in these little sachets like that. They've just got a tiny little hole at the top and this is basically like a colony in here and they will just release as and when. Um, and I'm using them alongside 
Amblesius Andersoni, which is for spider mites. It looks like that, and you just kind of lay it over the branches of your plant. And again, it's got these very small holes where, as and when they need to, they will release. Uh, and then I also went for a tube of, this is actually, this was 2000 in here, of phytoceolus mites, which are basically, so obviously I've already said that these ones are for spider mite control. These are for the ones where you've just kind of got like the odd spider mite here or there. And these are ones that, were, that are kind of like for more severe infestations when you've got webbing and stuff like that, just because they are a little bit more intense. And you do have to use these ones right away because if you store them in the tube, they will actually start attacking each other. So I've got about that much left in there. I released some yesterday and I'm gonna release the rest later in this video. So I will show you that. But all of these ones work really well together. They won't attack each other. They will just deal with the pest in hand and you won't have to worry. There are some, I think they're called hypoaspis or something like that, I'll pop the name on the screen. But when I reached out to the company and I basically said, can you tell me a little bit more? They basically said that those ones can attack like other predatory mites. So you shouldn't use them together because it would kind of be counteractive. But also on the whole, if you if you don't know, if you are experimenting with this for the first time, do reach out to the person that you're buying them from and ask the questions. Like, as I've already said, I got mine from Ladybird Plant Care, who I will link down below. They're absolutely fantastic. But I had so many questions about what I could and couldn't use together and they were so helpful. I was like, if I'm gonna place an order for these, can I use them alongside those? Can I put sachets for thrips and spider mites on the same plant? all that sort of stuff, I would say just, yeah, don't be afraid to ask the questions. The next question is, will they die off and do I need to keep buying more? So yes, eventually predatory insects will die back and you will need to replace them, especially if they haven't got any pests left to feed on, then obviously they're gonna die back slightly quicker. I actually get mine on a subscription service, so I get them delivered to me every six weeks and I just replace the sachets as and when I need to. But it's just, as I say, it's just a much easier way of doing things. I know that all I need to do is replace the sachets and essentially my plants are going to be absolutely fine. Obviously, I will still pest check. And for example, as I've already spoken about with the different types of spider mite predators, if I suddenly was to notice webbing, then I'd be like, right, I'm going to go back in with these stronger ones, stronger ones, <laughs> more intense predators. Or if it is just like one or two or I'm using them as a preventary measure, which I will speak about in a minute, then I will just literally replace the sachets as an when but yeah it just it makes my life a lot easier it keeps my plants really happy it just mimics how nature would be because obviously in their natural habitat as well as pests there would also be predators that were tackling the pests so it's just in my opinion a really good way of doing things the next question was has using mites ever negatively affected your plants growth literally absolutely not like this is the most natural way of doing things as i just said you are literally creating the most like realistic symbiotic relationship in your home that mimics nature in the way that things would be in the wild and really if you want healthy plants that is what you want to be doing so i have had absolutely zero negative effects and my plants are definitely a lot healthier for it because i haven't been putting nasty chemicals on them so yeah if anything it improves things can you use them as a prevention method if you don't actually have pests? So yes, you absolutely can. I do that even when I haven't actively got pests on my plants. The ones that I've showed you for spider mites and thrips, these ones contain a breeding colony, so they won't all release at once. They're kind of like slow release sachets, so they will just kind of appear over time. And if there are any pests there that need dealing with, then they will deal with them. As I've already said, the ones like the phytoceleus mites, those ones, if you don't use them right away, then they are going to start attacking each other. So I think unless you've got kind of quite a severe spider mite infestation, I wouldn't go for these as a prevention. Personally, please correct me if I'm wrong, but the sachets I use literally the whole time. Can you use them alongside a systemic pest treatment as well? So no, this is definitely not recommended. Systemic pest treatments are basically designed to get right into the cells of the plants so that anything that potentially feeds on the plants will die. That's why a lot of people opt for systemic pest treatments, but as I've already spoken about, they are definitely not the best thing for the plants. What I'll say is that if you're using biological pest control in the right way, then you shouldn't even need to worry about systemic pest treatments. I know it is kind of like a quick fix and it's so tempting to often be like, oh, I'll spray my plant down with this or I'll water with this. But as I, again, have already spoken about, you just need to be very conscious about what you're putting into your soil. I've spoken before about certain products like liquid gold leaf and stuff like that. Again, not sponsored, but 
things that actually really help to enhance the soil health and not damage microbes and living organisms and stuff like that. So the short answer is no, you should not use them in combination with each other, but there is technically no reason to need to do so if you rely on the fact that the predatory mites are gonna do their job. Can you use predatory mites for fungus gnats? So for fungus gnats, the form of biological pest control that I like to use are nematodes, which they look like this. Um, you store them in the fridge. They will have an expiry date on them, but you store them in the fridge and that is essentially what they look like. I'll show you how I use them in a minute, but oh my God, they are absolutely fantastic. Again, they are completely natural. They're basically like teeny tiny, again, it sounds gross, but they're teeny tiny microscopic worms. They basically kill the fungus gnat larvae in the soil to prevent them from breeding. And although, yes, it's very annoying to have loads of, loads of flies flying around your house, it is the larvae that you need to be more concerned about because essentially that can attack the root system and that can be very detrimental to the health of your plants. Not so much in kind of big, well-established plants, but if you think of seedlings or propagations or anything that doesn't have a really kind of solid root system, that's the bit you need to worry about. And this is where nematodes are absolutely fantastic. And as I say, I use them all the time. Again, they are teeny tiny microscopic. You would not be able to see them with the naked eye. Again, you wouldn't even know that they were there. So although it sounds a little bit gross, it does the job. And with the mature fungus gnats that you see flying about your house, the best thing you can do for them, like in combination with obviously making sure that they don't make any more, just use yellow sticky traps because they're drawn to yellow. They will stick to them. I know it's not nice. I, I personally don't like killing anything, but obviously you do just have to put certain measures in place unless you want your house to be totally infested. So yellow sticky traps are always a good way to go. And also on that note as well, in terms of just pest control, I think remembering that fungus gnats are drawn to the color yellow is really, really important. So for example, if you're not quite sure where the infestation might have started, it's quite helpful to sometimes look at plants that have got yellowing leaves because that is the color that's gonna draw the fungus gnats to that plant and potentially kind of be like a breeding ground for them. So it's also for that reason, a very good idea to remove yellow leaves on your plants, not because like, not just because they don't look pretty, but because it basically signals to pests that like hello I am an unhealthy plant and a lot of the time pests are literally going to flock to that plant but yeah those are the questions that were asked the most so I'm gonna take you off the tripod and I'm gonna walk you around and I'm gonna show you how I'm using predatory mites and nematodes in my own home so I'll walk you through the whole process. This is what to expect when you first place an order. This was my most recent order from Ladybird Plant Care and as you can see I got a lot. As I've already shown you, these are the sachets. You don't need to make another hole or open them at all. You just simply pop them onto your plants. That being said, if you're nosy like me and you want to see what's inside, I've taken the liberty of opening them up so we can take a little peek. The little tube of 2000 Phytocellius mites that I ordered were slightly more visible. You can see some running about here on top of the bottle, but obviously that's a lot of mites contained in a very small space. You genuinely don't see them once they've been released. With these ones, you just have to gently rotate the bottle to distribute them evenly and then sprinkle them onto your spider mighty plants. If it's a plant that doesn't have big leaves or an easy way for them to sit, you can also put little containers for mites around the plant. I also ordered some horticultural soap from them. This stuff is just awesome and you can use it in combination with predatory mites if an infestation has gotten particularly bad. It's just always useful stuff to have in the house. The thrip sachets have little hooks on them which I simply hang over the petioles or stems of my plants. These sachets are designed to target younger thrips, so if you've got mature adult thrips, you might need to go for something such as the hypoaspis mites, but as I say, these aren't recommended for use in combination with other types of predators. The spider mite sachets can be hung easily over the branches or petioles of the plant and will also just slowly release. I literally never see these predators, but they're obviously doing their job as I haven't seen any spider mites since I started using them. 
I've spoken already about using predatory insects as a preventative measure, but I find this particularly useful in areas such as my cabinets where I've got a lot of plants squished together. It just helps to stop a potential infestation in its tracks and helps to ensure that your plants stay healthy. When it comes to nematodes for fungus gnats, I got the scarid fly nematodes, but you can also get different types for things such as slugs. The measurements may vary depending on the company that you use, but they come with all of the information you need. You simply mix them with water, fill your watering can as normal, and then water your plants. I also use them to water moss propagations and moss poles if I suspect they may be residing and breeding in there. As I say, this is the easiest and most natural method of pest control that I've ever used. It's not gross and it's much simpler than you might think, but if there's any questions that I haven't answered, then please do let me know in the comments. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. I hope you learned something. If you did enjoy it, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day, and I will see you in the next video.